All right, so suppose we have a system of n atoms. They're non-interacting, they don't even move. They're distinguishable, so they're like sitting on a lattice or something, all right? So you can tell one apart from the other, all this great stuff. Um, and we give them a total energy of big E. And uh, so this is a, and, and let's say we have a two-state system. So there's only two energies uh, that they can, you know, uh, be in. Uh, zero, which we call zero, and epsilon. All right, so first, um, uh, suppose they're uh, in thermal equilibrium, and we want to know uh, what is the uh, maximum uh, possible average value of the um, energy, like for each atom. All right, so that is uh, just given by, so um, let's just call that uh, the, the big energy divided by the total, like, so this is the total energy divided by the total number of atoms, all right, so this is the average energy per atom, all right, so <coughs> what we want to do is just look at, uh, you know, what's the, um, the maximum uh, average energy per atom. So for thermal equilibrium, um, uh, this actually turns out to be uh, uh, one half of, of this higher state here. So when we did this uh, similar thing in the canonical ensemble, um, we got the, the average energy per atom uh, is E um, uh, or, uh, kBT and then a 1 plus E to the minus. So I was, I made a video of this, I was stumbling around on the, on the simple math and stuff. Um, right, this goes to zero for uh, very low temperatures where these uh, exponentials force uh, these two terms to zero, right? That goes to zero. Um, when t goes to infinity, um, these will, uh, uh, these uh, exponential parts go to zero and these become one, all right? So for um, high t, we get um, e d. Okay, multiplied by one, and then a one plus one here on the bottom, uh, epsilon over two. So, so, so uh, the the maximum, right? We we have a very high temperature. We're giving it as much energy as it wants to take in thermal equilibrium, and uh, we still end up with a maximum of epsilon over two. All right. Um, so this was sort of from a canonical ensemble uh, perspective. From a microcanonical ensemble perspective, where we're, we're uh, just counting microstates, um, we we kind of have um, we can look at the uh, the total number of atoms, all right, and uh, and then there's the the number of atoms that have energy. Energy epsilon. All right, so this is a, a factorial right here, and then we multiply it by the number that don't have energy. So that's an n minus big E over epsilon. All right. All right. So binomial distribution, um, which is maximized when uh, these two terms are equal and they're equal to one half of n. All right. So. Uh, so if this is our number of microstates, uh, which once we take the log of it, we'll get the entropy, um, and we want to maximize the entropy, well then we want to maximize the number of microstates as well. And that happens when um, uh, this uh, big E over uh, little e is equal to one half of n. So what that means is that 
only half of the uh, atoms are excited to this um, higher state, which would give you um, the average energy per atom uh, of epsilon uh, divided by two. All right, so same as for the uh, microcanonical ensemble. So uh, this was all, you know, supposing we have thermal equilibrium. If we don't, then all bets are off. Um, you can, so this, for example, in a laser, you're able to pump more atoms up to a higher state, and you get an inversion. So, um, so basically, you're able to uh, give it more energy and actually de by actively um, uh, interfering, you're able to raise more atoms to uh, to uh, to a higher state and actually decrease the entropy. All right. So if we now look at the entropy of this system, again from the uh, microcanonical ensemble perspective, if we We just have uh, the Boltzmann's constant multiplied by the natural log of the number of microstates. All right, so if we're looking at the total entropy of all of the atoms, um, we have uh, this number of microstates is just equal to this. All right, so um, let's go ahead and write this out. this. Okay, so uh, one thing we're going to do, well, first let's write it out like this. Let's um, go ahead and uh, I guess this should be inside the parentheses, I don't know. in there this time. Okay. Okay. Do this. Okay. All right. So we've we've written out uh, an expression for the entropy. Um, we can now take uh, Stirling's approximation. So that the natural log of something factorial is equal to. off some higher terms of Stirling's approximation. Um, okay, and so in order to do this, we have to assume that n is large. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to assume that there's a really large number of atoms, and there are so many. Um, well, we know that in um, thermal equilibrium that the number with that are not excited, um, that are in the lower energy state, are going to uh, be always at least as half as large as n. All right. So if n is very large, then um, then what? This this uh, n minus big E over epsilon, that number will always be at least half as large as big N. So. If big N is really big, then we can also use the approximation for this. Um, and we'll also assume we're not at um, some very low temperature or something where um, we're getting close to um, all of the atoms drop down to the lower state. All right, so, so, uh, so we're just saying that there are also a large number of excited atoms. Basically, what this boils down to is we're just going to use this approximation for all three of these terms. All right, so I'll go ahead and say approximately here. Okay, so we have n ln of n minus n. Q 
okay, minus big E over epsilon, ln of big E over epsilon. Okay, minus sign here, so we get a plus big E over epsilon. Okay, and then uh, minus um, n minus epsilon, or big E, oops, over epsilon, ln of n minus big E over epsilon plus n minus big E over epsilon. All right, so we can clean this up a bit. Uh, this term will cancel with this term. Um, what else do we have? Oh, this and this will go away. Yeah, not sure exactly how how far we care to take this. I'll just leave this one all, all together. have to put this back up here in your mind. Okay, and that's it. Okay. All right. So here's the, the, the total entropy. I guess you could call like configurational entropy. So for a given amount of energy um, and a given number of atoms, uh, based on how many ways you can divide that divide that up, here's what we get for the, for the um, entropy. All right, so if we want to compute the entropy per atom, all we would do is divide both sides by n.